Hello and welcome to the screencast. My name is Nikita Ivanov. I'm the founder of Grid Game Project. Grid Game is a unique platform for building high-performance distributed applications that run on any grid and cloud infrastructure. What I'm going to show you in this short tutorial is how you can quickly and effectively build a simple MapReduce application using Grid Gain in Java. What is unique about this video is that there's nothing prepared or pre-built for it. In fact, you're going to see the entire process from start to finish of how to build a simple MapReduce app. From the moment you download Great Gain to the moment you have your application running in the distributed context, all it takes is less than the five minutes. We're going to start by downloading Great Gain from our website, greatgain.com. You can find the download link on our homepage, enter your name and the email to download. You can download GPL-based Community Edition or Commercial Enterprise Edition that comes with a time-unlimited evaluation license. Note that grid gain distribution comes with a zip archive that you can simply unzip into a desired location. For the purpose of this tutorial, I've installed grid gain into the GG3 directory in my home folder. Now, for our MapReduce application, we're going to run a couple of standalone grid gain nodes to simulate the cloud environment on this laptop. But first, we need to set up grid gain home variable, pointing to the installation directory. Once it's done, we can start a node by simply running the GG start script from the bin subfolder. That will start the grid gain node with the default configuration. We're going to repeat the steps for the second node. Set up grid gain home. I'm doing it manually, but you can obviously put in some profile script. Start GG start. And the second node comes up. As you can see, uh, both nodes automatically discover each other. There are two nodes and they share the same four cores on this laptop. Now let's switch to idea where we're going to write our Java-based MapReduce app. When our application starts, it will join the topology and become the third node. Note that Grid Game doesn't really have any dependence on idea. You can use Grid Game with any ID, including Eclipse and NetBeans, or you can use Emacs, VI, or Notepad. All zero deployment functionality that is at the core of a Grid Game system will work in any development environment. Now let's create a new project. We're going to name project demo, all defaults, and we need to add a few libraries. We're going to name library gg3, and we're going to add the gg3 folder itself, and also we're going to add the lib subfolder to it. Okay, now we can proceed and start writing our Java class. Let's name it Java MapReduce. So we're going to remove some of those comments and add the import or gain dot grade. We're also going to add the import for type devs. and a static import for a closure call modes as we're going to use functional programming APIs in our example. So we're going to start with a default a main function in Java. And we're going to make it a throw exception so we don't handle exception in this example. Now, to simulate a business logic, we're going to develop a method that counts non-space characters in a string. And we're going to do that in a MapReduce fashion. We're going to split the given string by spaces into individual words and distribute their processing by letting every node on the grid count the characters in a single word. We're then going to aggregate the partial counts from all the nodes by summing them up and producing the final count for the original string. And we're going to do all that using Great Gains functional programming APIs. Let's go ahead and create the method. It's going to be public static. Let's call it a MapReduce count. It takes uh, one parameter called message, type string, and throws exception. Let's also add its usage right away to the main method. Uh, we're just going to print line immediately and code and pass Java Great Gain MapReduce. Now let's go ahead and add a 
method body for a MapReduce method count. We're going to use global projection and call better reduce on it. We're going to specify a spread uh, closure execution call mode. And we're going to use a method F yield to produce a sequence of closures. Each closure will print out the method or word it's working on and also will calculate its length. And we're also going to use sum reducer in the end. That's all. Let's go ahead and create a runtime configuration. Just an application, uh, the class called Java MapReduce. We will need to specify the VM parameter for grid gain home environment variable. And that's about it. And we forgot to add start and stop of a node, so we're going to do gstart and gstop with the parameter 2. Let's review what we've got. First of all, GF and C1 are simple type defs or type aliases, and you can use full class names if you prefer. Meta gstart allows you to start a grid gain node within Java applications. Since we don't pass any parameters to it, it starts the node with a default configuration. The same way, by the way, we start our standalone nodes. Meta G stop stops the node. Everything that resides between these two calls will be executed in the context of a live grid node that is part of topology. Now let's take a look at the map reduce count method. First of all, we're going to use functional programming in implementing this method. First, we acquire a global projection, which defines a set of all nodes available in topology. A projection exposes a melodic set of operations that are defined on any arbitrary set of nodes, including the global one. One of these operations is a map reduce method called reduce, which we're going to use. Reduce method takes three parameters. First is a closure execution mode, and we're going to use spread to equally spread the workload among all the nodes in the projection. Second is a collection of closures that will be spread executed on the nodes in the projection. And finally, a third parameter is a closure that will be executed locally and is responsible for aggregating the intermediate results received from the closures defined by the second parameter. Notice that we're using the method code F yield that is somewhat reminiscent to Scala for comprehensions, for example, in the sense that it takes a collection of objects and a template closure, it closes this closure over each element in this collection and returns the final collection of applied template closures. For the third parameter, we will use built-in integer aggregator. And note also that in the body of the template closure, we are printing out which word we are calculating for. This printout will happen on each node where calculation or closure execution occurs. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a run. Click Start, and it starts the node with the default configuration. Same output as the standalone nodes, and it worked. As we can see, one node calculated for MapReduce, another node calculated for grid gain, and this node calculated for Java, and the count is 21. Now, what's important to note is the fact that there weren't any deployment steps. As you've seen, we didn't run any end or Maven builds, we didn't create any jar files, and we didn't need to stop and restart our standalone nodes to make them aware of a new code we just wrote. This unique behavior is provided by Grid Gain's zero deployment technology that allows you to develop in the distributed environment in exactly the same way as you would do in local context, which tremendously improves your productivity when you are developing distributed applications. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed the screencast, and I hope I convince you that you don't have to spend days and weeks to develop high-performance distributed applications. In fact, you can do it a lot quicker and more efficiently with Grid Gain. Please follow us for the latest news on our website, gridgain.com, or on our Twitter.